Hey, what's up everybody? It's David here with Tough Guys TV. And on this episode, we're gonna be checking out the Omtech Polar Plus. This video is gonna be covering if you're new to the market, you're new to CO2 lasers, maybe you're new to lasers in general. So why should you consider the Omtech Polar Plus? Let's get started. All right, full transparency, Omtech did provide the Polar Plus to our channel in exchange for a review. And a review is exactly what we're going to do here. And we're gonna let you know what we think about this laser as well as CO2 lasers in general. There was a previous version that was just known as the Polar and that model was a 50 watt. So we're specifically covering the 55 watt plus model. I have quite a bit of experience with diode lasers, but this is my first CO2 laser. Now there were two main things I was interested in in going to a CO2 laser. The first one was being able to deal with clear acrylic specifically, and then also other acrylics that diode lasers just don't handle that well. And additionally, I wanted to be able to engrave on stainless steel. Now, before we dig too much into the different projects that we built using this laser, I wanna talk about some of the things that I just like about it right out of the box. Now, my favorite feature about this is it has a touch screen built in right on the top of the unit. Now, that touch screen allows you to move around the laser head. You can jog it up, down, left, and right, wherever you need it to go. You can also set your autofocus. Now, the autofocus for me is like, an automatic feature that I personally have to have. I am not trying to have to tinker with this thing to get it to work. I really just prefer to hit a button to autofocus. That's how it's been with all of my other diode lasers. So going to CO2, that was one of the things that for me was sort of a non-negotiable. Now with this laser, they do include an air assist so that you can get the air out of the back side of the unit and vent it outside. They also include two pieces of duct for you to connect the air assist motor out. The whole process of setting that up is very easy. You've got a couple of ring clamps. You can clamp it onto the back of the machine. You can connect your ducts to the little motor. It has arrows to show you which way it needs to go. And then you can vent it outside however is best for you. Now, one other nice thing with that little air assist is they give you this little controller and you can actually turn this off and on from wherever you are in your shop. So you can mount this as well. It's got some double-sided tape or you can screw it onto something. So I just keep it up on top of the laser because it's the easiest thing for me. But that's another nice feature about operating this. So as far as safety goes, if we keep that theme going, I really like the fact that the clear glass on the top is rated the same as you would have safety goggles. I've talked directly to Omtech at length about this to make sure that it was safe for me to be in here engraving and cutting with this laser, just looking through the glass top. They've assured me that it is safe to use, so it's coming straight from them. Another great feature about this laser is that it has a camera built into the lid of it. So if you're using Lightburn, for example, you can do an overlay onto your grid so you can see what you have inside the laser. It definitely helps you when trying to place something exactly where you need it to be. The process to set up the camera is a little bit difficult, but there's a lot of videos online. I'll try to link a couple in the description that I use to help me with it. But basically you have this little punch card, it's got some dots on it, and you set that down inside the laser bed and you move it around. And then that process maps the grid correctly so that it can do the overlay inside the software. The laser itself comes with a cover installed on it. So I took this off. So when you are watching the video, you're gonna see that this cover is not installed. That's so that I can see the actual laser module and I can see that it's auto-focusing, that it's touching the piece of product that I need it to touch. I can also more easily see when it's framing where it is. There isn't a laser guide that tells me like a beam that shows me because the CO2 laser is clear. So anyways, if you notice that this is not installed in my video, it does come with this. It's just, I don't have it installed so I can more easily see what I'm doing. It just pops on with magnets. So if you wanna keep this off and on yourself, it's very easy to do. So another great thing that comes in the box with this laser is a bunch of material. You get basswood, cardboard, and clear acrylic. You can use the cardboard for templating or just testing out your designs before you get to your other products, but they give you quite a bit of all three. You can see here. Now I've actually used some of the product already, and then they mark right on there what the product is so you know what you're using. This is a nice touch because buying those extra materials actually does cost quite a bit of money. So especially if you're getting started with CO2 engraving like I am, it was nice to have that acrylic already included in the package so that I could start working right away and I didn't have to go order anything. Another cool feature that I really like is that you can leave your main power on in the back and so you don't have to fumble back there when you need to turn it off and on. They give you a set of little keys that you can just keep right here on the front of the laser. And when I turn it off, 
the laser goes off. I don't have to fumble around and figure out where the power button is in the back. I can just leave that turned on, leave it plugged in. And when I'm ready to turn it back on, I turn it back on. Now, quick note about the electrical. I have mine hooked into a dedicated 110 outlet. I believe that they recommend that you have a dedicated outlet. If you don't, your laser may not be able to get the power that it needs. Now, speaking about the power, while this thing is running, there is a tiny little LED screen back in the back side. So when the laser module is pulled forward, it actually tells you a readout of the voltage that you're getting, and you can see if it's where it needs to be. So another nice little feature that kind of goes along with the power settings on this that I think they thought through very well. I think Omtech did a great job with their little accessory pack that comes with the laser. You get some cleaning accessories. They give you a pre-made clear acrylic sample. This way you know uh, how to set up for some clear acrylic engraving right out of the box. They also have all of the Allen wrenches you would need in here as well, and they keep it in a nice little plastic container. That way everything you need is stored nice and neat when you need it. There's also a nice little button here on the front that's a stop start button. You can pause your cut or you can resume it. If you do have this thing open, it will turn red to let you know that it's not gonna do anything when this is open because there's sensors in there to protect your eyeballs. As far as styling goes, I like that the product is made of metal. It is very heavy. So again, moving it around in the shop, we have it on a cart that can actually wheel around. So if I need to move it, it's a little bit easier. I would definitely recommend that. On the front side, it's got this nice blue LED strip. And then on the inside, everything is white LEDs and it lights the inside very well. It has a shelf that can come out and it will catch all the bits and debris that fall when you're doing your cuts. And additionally, they do include a honeycomb panel in the box. So this isn't something that you have to go out and buy. Um, it has millimeters on the top or centimeters. And then it has, I believe on the other side, your uh, inches. So both are on here, depending on what you prefer to use. So I think it's a nice touch that they include this. And inside of here, there is a built-in groove that allows you to slide this right in, nice and easy. And then on the bottom of the tray, there is a piece of metal in there that's like a guard to protect anything from burning through. Like if the laser is going through the honeycomb panel and hitting this, you're not gonna be burning out the backside. Now this laser does include two rotary attachments. Though at least the kit that we got came with two different rotary attachments. One of them is for a slightly larger piece. One of them is for something smaller. I will note that either way you go, you're gonna to have to raise the height of this in order to use the rotary attachments. From what I can tell, you only have about an inch and a half of space to use with these if you do not raise it. And unfortunately, Ontech does not include in the box any way to raise this, but you can just put some wood on either side of it if you have it on a workstation, or if you're watching other videos online, you'll see lots of creators have come up with cool ways to do this, even making their own custom little blocks. But yeah, so if you're gonna use the rotary attachments, you might wanna think about that. Okay, so now let's talk about projects. So for the acrylic, like I showed earlier, we decided to make this little skull to kind of show off what the machine can do. Now with the acrylic, there's definitely a learning curve. I had to try a few different ways to get the clear to kind of work like I wanted to. And you also need to spend some time tweaking your settings. Be prepared for that. That would be the advice I would give you if you're using this machine, and especially if you're new to Lightburn as well. Just be prepared to make mistakes. It's gonna be trial and error. I'll try to link down below any resource pages that I found on my journey trying to get this thing working and that way hopefully I can help you out. But yeah, I think the skull turned out pretty cool. The file that I used actually has a bunch of different sizes. I think I got this from Etsy, so shout out to that creator. I'll try to put a link down below. But this is something that I was thinking about making and I think it turned out pretty cool. Now, since I was on the 3D shape kick when I decided to try something with the three millimeter basswood that's included in the box, I found these plans for a wooden grenade. And hey YouTube, it's a wooden grenade, it's not real, so let's not, uh, let's not freak out about that, but this thing actually does allow you to pull the pin out, and this piece actually comes off, so you could toss it to your friends or whatever. But anyways, yeah, the detail on this was pretty good. Now, similarly to the acrylic, it did take a little bit of time to get things dialed in for the basswood, but that's the reason why you do tests and test cuts before you actually work on the final product. But once we got everything dialed in, it went pretty well. One thing I would say I've noticed with this laser in particular is that I generally take whatever settings I find online and I 
I tune them down, especially the speed. It seems to do better with a little bit slower speed. And I don't know if that's just the nature of this in particular laser. Some of my other lasers actually do better when I speed them up a little bit, but the Polar Plus seems to do better when I slow it down a little and I get much better lines, much better consistency and much better engravings overall. Now, Omtech actually gives you some files that you can use. These are test cards and you can see this one was like an engraved test. You can cut these out of the three millimeter basswood that they include in the box. And they also include some clear acrylic. So one of the things I did was start off by just cutting some hexagons so that I could get used to how does it move? What are the cuts look like? Are they smooth on the edges? Am I getting fogging? Things like that. Again, trial and error on the small stuff before you work on your finished product. Now, the last thing we tried was actually engraving on some stainless steel. If you remember, that's one of the things I wanna kinda of get into. And Omtech gave me some of their laser marking spray. So this spray is designed to spray onto the metal and you let it dry for five or 10 minutes before you do the engraving. And I had this uh, new five-way or drywall tool, you could say, because we're in the middle of building our house. And so I thought I would customize it and I think it did pretty good. Actually, it did better than I expected. Not that I expected the Omtech Polar Plus to do poorly. It's just that I had never done this before and it looks really, really good. It's very sharp. This is not very large. You can see it's uh, quite a small design, but it turned out nice and clear. It's a little bit off center, but I blame me for that, not the machine. We actually have a kitchen knife that we were going to engrave. It is super dull, I need to sharpen it but this is what it looks like when you have that finish on there. It sort of just dries white and then you can see it just rubs off. So you rinse it off after it's had a chance to dry and then you'll be able to see your design or your engraving, whatever you've done to it, you'll be able to see once you wipe off that paint. So if you're interested in doing the metal engraving, I recommend you get a can of this as well when you get your laser. Okay, now I wanna talk about a couple of things I wish that they would have done that aren't automatically either included or just little changes that I think they could make and maybe we could hope for that in the next version of the Polar by Omtech. One thing I wish they would do is have their own software suite like some of the other brands have. I think it's nice to just have something that works directly with your laser instead of Lightburn is sort of a casting a large net, but I think it has a really, really large learning curve. And I think a lot of people just trying to get into laser engraving they sort of just get lost in the shuffle trying to learn Lightburn. And it would be nice if there was something else that you could use with this laser. Now, the next thing I've already mentioned before, which is that I wish you could raise and lower this a little bit easier, or if maybe you could get a riser base, maybe Omtech does have one that I'm just not aware of, but it would be great if there was something that came in the box, even if it was just four little feet, because this does have rubber feet on it already. It would be nice if there was some way I could raise this up to use those rotary attachments more easily. Now, lastly for me, it's the camera. I wish that the process of setting up the camera was much easier. Me personally, I had a pretty tough time getting it dialed in. And this sort of goes back to the first thing I mentioned. I think if there was integrated software, it would be easier to get that camera process to be a lot easier. But once you do get it set up, it works really well in Lightburn. It just, again, another small thing that I think would make the user experience a little bit better. And all right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that if you are in the market looking at lasers, especially CO2 lasers, that this helps you make your decision about deciding on the Omtech Polar Plus. I do think it is a good laser, especially entry level, someone like me coming into CO2 engraving there are some negatives, but I think that the pros outweigh those. Don't forget that you are going to need a Lightburn subscription. I believe they recently switched to doing a yearly recurring charge, whereas in the past it was just like a one-time buy sort of situation. I do believe you can purchase a version of the Omtech Polar that has the Lightburn subscription already included. So if that's something you're worried about, then go ahead and set that up. But yeah, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below or reach out to us on social media at Tough Guys TV everywhere. And I hope to see you in the next project. Thanks for watching.